Have you seen trend lines that connect the tops and the bottoms? Have you thought of that only a percent of the entire information in the chart is used when you only use the tops and the bottoms? And that percent often come from panic seller and former buyers and other type of dumb money setting liquidation levels way too close to the market price. Does it sound smart to base your trend lines on the dumb money panic selling? and liquidation levels. A more data-driven approach would be to use all the data in the chart to establish if and what type of trend we might have. The next step will be to compare different type of trend lines to see which one have the best fit. Once again, this can be done data-driven with statistical measurement to compare which model is the better. A linear, a polynomial, or an exponential, just to mention a few. But here is the kicker, even if you do this, most of these models will still not be able to predict anything. Because even a monkey can draw some lines that happen to fit the historical data. But there is a way to test if your model can predict or not. This is a step that the dumb money are happily unaware of. If you remove parts of the data, and let the model, regardless of if it's a simple trend line or an advanced artificial intelligence, you let it predict the data that are missing. You remove it from the model, so only you know what the result should be. And here, ladies and gentlemen, here is where all the retrofitted, backtested models that apparently did so well totally crashes. This is what separates dumb money from smart money. If you should have any chance to do a predictor model, this step is the most crucial of them all. The content in this video is not intended for financial advice, it's only for information and educational purposes. 